Filthy, before we get to Edmonds power and your great pitching and defensive plays, can you take us through the step-by-step -step with the, the head issue and your ejection? Commission, I, I do respect. I would love to talk about the game first and then address that after that, if you don't mind, sir. All right, let's talk about uh, Edmund hitting two balls, 866 feet today. Is that should that surprise people or not? Um, it may, not us. He's um, he's got pop. He's, he's um, historically had displayed it today a little more from the right side, but um, has it from both sides. And man, he, he put some really nice swings um, on the baseballs today. And clearly two big homers to in a tight tight ball game great great swings by Eddie how do you find that Gant is able to pitch out of so much trouble he, he's, he's a lot a lot of base runners this year but very few of them have scored yeah he's a pitching equivalent of Frogger um you know he plays in a lot of a lot of traffic but he's really good at it um you know the guy's got multiple pitches um he's got um trust in his stuff He's got the ability to stay present, which is a huge asset um, for anybody, but including pitching, especially when things, um, you know, are um, can be a little more challenging. I think also his possibly, I can't say this to be accurate, but another possibility would be he's used to pitching out of the bullpen and coming in with traffic, so he's used to pitching with some traffic. Um, and he's just a really, really good competitor. Um, and uh, all those things... The multiple pitches, the, the strong competitive spirit, the ability to get the ball on the ground, and also, um, you know, maybe coming out of the bullpen in the past has helped him with the right mentality. But he's um, he's done a fantastic job slowing things down, making executing pitches. What does this show about Gallegos that he would get those two strikeouts after the whatever we want to call it took place? Yeah, we'll address that momentarily. Um, well, it just speaks to Gio. Gio is a um, Gio's one chill dude, you know. He's just a got a he's got a great competitive spirit as well. He's got his pitches, but he's got a he's got a nice slow heartbeat, and he just goes out and execute pitches. And um, he's aggressive, but he does it in a very controlled fashion. And he was uh, he was lights out today. Does it look like Sosa can hit a lot of different places in the lineup for you? Big two run single. I mean, you know, goes up hitting fifth. On a day we've got some guys out and some guys, you know, getting a blow from from the, you know, the game today and stepped up. And the thing is, similar to Yachty in the sense that he just don't take his at bat. You know, he's just okay. Situation calls for. You know, he chased the, the breaking ball out of the zone, and then um, I had a little different seat than I normally do to see it. Um, and then you just see him. Okay, I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm gonna realize what I'm likely to get here. Not gonna drive too too much now. And just put a good stroke on it. Nice little um, hard hit ball through the middle. Score two big insurance runs. Now, whenever you're ready, uh, you discuss the. I'll let everybody else entertain what they would like for the game, and then I'll, I'll handle the other thing here in a moment. All right. Right. Silver, MLB.com. Thanks, Commish. Mike, when, when Rodon is kind of as locked in as he is, how I guess impressive, big, crucial, whatever your word you want to use is for Tommy to kind of pounce on the one mistake that he's able to make and to kind of get you guys that lead. That's what close games are about. And, um, you know, we play a fair share of them. And um, it's about, for us, about staying present, staying ready. Whatever that moment might be, whether it's a pitch that you can get to handle, whether it's a ball in the dirt that you read, um, whether it's, you know, cutting a play off and holding a guy to a single and then a double play ball, whether it's taking a bag, um, you don't know what that moment's going to be. So we just... Uh, our guys do a great job of staying present and, and um, you know, taking advantage of opportunities when they present themselves. To your point, Rodon didn't give us many opportunities, but Tommy pounced on the one that he did. What have you made of Rodon this season? Obviously, you know, is he's had a winding career and he's kind of putting up these numbers as a no hitter already. What getting to see him up close do you think has kind of made him as successful? Um, well, he's he's got a plus arm. Um, you know, dirty slider. Um, he's got some. He's got stuff for you. He's got a big arm. It's the reason he went, um, you know, third in the country. Um, you know, that's a club that you know. Give them credit. They had a lot of high picks, and uh, they their scouting and development department did a nice job with, you know, landing some good players and developing them. So um, he's a clearly a um, got good stuff. Big arm. Thank you. Katie Wu, the athletic. 
Like it was a very uncharacteristic series for your club, specifically defensively. I believe there were seven errors over three games and a lot more defensive miscues that weren't necessarily errors, but, you know, plays that you could argue should have been made. So that being said, how big was Williams' play to nab the runner at home and, and just to come away with the win and kind of right the ship after some things have been struggling? Well, you, you know, the guys prove they're human some days, right? And uh, I was talking to Claves on KMOX earlier before the game about, you know, some uncharacteristic defense. And he said, what do you make of it? I said, um, the guys walk up right and, you know, and uh, have human DNA. <laughs> I mean, that's just how, how you know, it works. And um, that way you maybe don't appreciate enough when they make all these wonderful plays and, and uh, they prove they're human some days. And, but Willie has a huge play. You know, we're in a jam early on, bases loaded comes in, makes a nice, strong, accurate throw. Kids with a really nice tag, and that was a that was a huge play and big throw by Willie. Really contributed, to, you know, quite a bit to the end result of this game on that play. Skipper, the floor is yours. All right, everybody, good with the game. Um, so, thanks, Commish, for um, letting me do the game first. Um, well couple thoughts and I'm sure you're gonna have some questions because I've got I've got my fair share of thoughts um, first of all here's what factually happened Geo comes in the game um, I wasn't aware at the moment I just caught the end of it now I'm more privy to how it unfolded um, my initial reaction was Joe comes over walks over to Geo I don't know what it's really in regard to um, it's uncharacteristic I walk out see what's going on he said he needs to change hats turns out that Dan Bellino had um, watched Joe come in the game and then goes over to Joe, which was here. Joe goes to the mound and then, you know, listens that Gio needs to, needs to change his hat. Um, so why do I take exception with that? Um, because this is baseball's dirty little secret and it's the wrong time in the wrong arena to expose it. Because here's, here's the thing. And make sure I get my words right, because um, I got a decent chance of getting fined. And my wife Michelle, will, you know, gosh darn it, um, it's for the integrity of the game. And, and <laughs> um, but anyway, um, here's the deal. Um, first of all, Geo wears the same hat all year. Okay, um, hats accrue dirt. Hats accrue substances. You know, like just stuff. You know. We pitched in a day game. Um, so did Gio have some sunscreen at some point in his career to, to change his, um, make sure he doesn't get some kind of melanoma? Possibly. Um, you know, does he use rosin to help out? Possibly. Is Are these things that baseball really wants to crack down on? No, it's not. I know that completely firsthand from the commissioner's office. That is not anything that's going to affect his ability to compete. And it was interesting with my um, buddy Ernie Moore, our traveling secretary. Um, he goes, man, that really, a new hat didn't really seem to affect Geo's stuff too much. Um, so that part was nice to see. Um, so now let's get to the genesis of this conversation. And this is the part that um, is the, and I, Major League Baseball has got a very, very, very tough position here because there are people that are effectively and not even trying to hide, essentially flipping the bird at the league with how they're cheating in this game with concocted substances. There are players that have been monetized for it. There are players that are obviously doing it, going to their glove. There's clear video of it you can tell the pitchers that are doing it because they don't want to go to their their mouth which geo does off the rubber and understandably and i know comfortably major league baseball is is trying their best to do it in a manner that doesn't create any black eye for the integrity of the game that we love but speaking of integrity how about the integrity of the guys that are doing it clean how about the guys that are pitching their tails off in Major League Baseball and doing it clean that have an unfair competitive advantage for the guys that are clearly loading up with concoctions that they actually advertise, don't do anything to hide, even in plain view, 
that's the guys I'm speaking for. I'm speaking up for the hitters that have a living to make facing stuff that's already really, really good. And you can see, based on spin rates, how guys' careers are jumping off the charts. And then you can do cause and effect. Now, I don't want to be, look, is our house 100% clean? I certainly hope so. Am I creating more of an opportunity? Because I just spoke to our pitchers. Am I creating more of a, 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 I mean, awareness to our group? Potentially. But let's go check the guys that are sitting there going their glove every day with filthy stuff coming out, not some guy before he's even stepped on the mound with a spot on his hat. That's how you want to start policing this? And unfortunately, that's how this is going to start. Now, maybe this is a crescendo for things to come. But can I tell you 100% that all our guys are 100% clean with nothing you know, other than some sunscreen and some rosin, which the hitters don't mind, by the way, because they want the grip, which is why we don't want the guys getting you know, hit in various spots with, with big arms. Hitters don't mind the grip. They don't want the stuff that's making the ball do wiffle ball stuff. And that's the issue at hand here. So you want to police some sunscreen and rosin? Go ahead. Get every single person in this league. Hit by pitches will just continue to go up. Balls will get away. But why don't you start with the guys that are cheating with some stuff that are really imp- impacting the game and impacting how people play this game. And that's the, that's the integrity of the game I'll speak up for. Popular, I really don't care. It's accurate. All right. We'll start taking questions. Rick Hummel, St. Louis Post-Dispatch, do you have a question? Yeah, did – when you – took your hat off. What got you kicked out? Did you offer your hat to when you took your hat off? Is that what did it? I I think I said some inappropriate um, language that did that. I was going to give my hat to Gio, but I don't I didn't get that far. Okay, you were you were done before that. Yeah. And then I got sidetracked, but I was going to switch hats with him, but I didn't get that far. What did Joe say to you? Look, Joe's Joe and, and understand this, Joe, do I agree with the timing of it? Do I agree that it looked like something that didn't taste real good or feel real good or felt, um, felt like a setup, to be honest with you? Um, and, and, and again, it just came out of nowhere, um, you know, to a guy that does go to his fingers that's been filthy and was filthy after it. You know, check his spin rates on his stuff, six pitch, eighth, uh, maybe not enough data. Um, but do I blame him for, for upholding something that, they have a responsibility to do. I don't blame them at all. Now let's do it around the whole league when guys are going their gloves. Now let's really do it. You know, that's what I'm saying. It's not, it wasn't the right time, in my opinion, for that to happen. But now you've opened it up. So let's go. Let's get in some people. Let's, we got these guys going around in locker rooms. Really? I don't. What are they doing? You know, we're in the end of May. You want to talk about sample size, collecting data, collecting video? Well, you know, let's see it. Katie Wu, The Athletic. Mike, what did Gio have to say about all this? I can't imagine it was particularly easy for him to deal with either. Gio's chill, man. Gio's like, I just want, I just like that hat. You know, I like the hat, you know. About all he had to say. Like, I, you know, Gio pitch whatever hat you want him to pitch in. To add to kind of just the, the absurdity of this is that it didn't affect his pitching at all in any way. That's Gio. That's why he's able to pitch. We noticed that in a long time. He's got a slow heartbeat. He, he, he doesn't make situations. You know, when relievers come up, you pitch him in, ease him in, see how they're going to react to the stimulation. And then we realized the stuff was, A, really good. And then we started getting higher leverage situations. We talked about relievers the other day. Um, and then we started getting higher leverage situations. And then you realize, regardless of situation, he's just going to pitch. And his stuff's the stuff. And he looks to ex- execute. And his stuff's really really good it's a wonderful trait cabby's gotten to that point you, you've seen alex evolve to that point fantastic traits not making situations bigger than they are things get a little out of whack okay let me just wait till the guy gets in the box and i'll make my pitches and the last thing for me i just want to clarify that this is an umpire decision and nothing came through the white Sox side of the dugout i'm not aware of that um you know everything that we're aware of um came from umpire decision. I don't know that it came from the other side. I don't, if it did, then, you know, that's their prerogative, but I don't, I don't believe that's, that was the case. Thank you. Jeff yes, Jones, ma'am. Belleville News Democrat. 
Mike, I just spoke to Joe, and, and he said that his goal was to protect Gio and keep him in the game by asking him to switch hats before he threw a pitch with the hat that he had on. Do yeah, you have and, a reaction to that? And I can appreciate that. That's why I said, is he? did he handle it? I mean, yeah, I mean, he, he kept him in the game, but kept him in the game from what? Because he had a dirty hat? wayno has got a dirty hat, you know? It just felt – it, 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 I mean, look, he comes out of the bullpen and – He's targeted for whatever reason, you know, initially. Um, but I do appreciate the fact he gave him the opportunity to stay in the game, and that's one of the reasons he's had as distinguished career as he had. I'm not faulting Joe at all, and you know, because they they chose to enforce something that, you know, looked somewhat suspicious to them. They have every and that's the part of their job to police the game, and I want to make sure I'm clear. I'm I'm not challenging that. I'm only challenging the fact that there's some there's much more egregious things happening in real time that aren't being challenged. That's my only consideration. So really, Joe doing his part, I have no issue with it.